and welcome to California Up Now. I'm Claudia Eisman, your host. This is a show dedicated to the issues and the topics that make our Golden State great. Today, we took our show on the road. We're in San Jose, downtown at the Deridon Station, named after Rod Deridon, and he's our guest today. Thank you, Rod, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Sure, it's our pleasure. And we're talking about transportation. And the first topic we want to know is, tell us how much is high-speed rail costing the California taxpayers? Well, the total cost, and only a small fraction is being uh, borne by the taxpayers of California, the total cost of the system from Anaheim to San Francisco is $64 billion. Now, that's uh, not going to occur all at once. Uh, the first uh, 20 billion, which is in hand now, uh, will get us from Bakersfield to San Jose uh, through the Pacheco Pass. That's in hand, that's committed, and those uh, construction projects have been going now for the past two years, and the uh, system is on schedule to arrive here at the Deridon Station, either uh, elevated or on grade in 2024 or 25. That's only eight years away. And do you feel like we're prepared? Well, we really are not. Uh, we're preparing. Uh, there's a joint powers advisory board consisting of the mayor and the head of the Valley Transportation Authority and the Board of Supervisors and others that are studying what needs to be done. They're creating what's uh, called an alternative analysis and an environmental clearance to determine uh, what's to be done in the 260-acre area that's been designated the Deridon area uh, study uh, uh, section and uh, they're going to determine it is going to be elevated they're going to have high-rise structures they're going to have a mix of parking and uh, and all of those other things that go into in effect rebuilding a town uh, rebuilding a city uh, the 10th largest city in california in the united states by the way so it's not just a town anymore but uh, uh, that uh, joint powers board is going to come out with their report in about a year and that's exciting i'm excited about that how is that going to help us on our freeways well as soon as the uh, high-speed rail and uh, Caltrain is electrified as part of that and BART is uh, extended through San Jose and up to Santa Clara, uh, you're going to see a huge relief in the traffic congestion on Highway 152, Highway 580, uh, over the passes into the Central Valley and up the peninsula on Highway 101 and uh, uh, 280. Are, there's going to be a lot of relief there because you're going to more than double the capacity of Caltrain. Uh, right now you're carrying about 65,000 riders a day. You're going to be well over 120,000 riders a day uh, uh, on the Caltrain system and even more than that on high-speed rail. So there's a great opportunity for relief on those terribly congested roads. Thank you very much. We're going to go to a break. We'll see you back here. Book your wedding day with us. Salon DNA, 415-956-1909. Okay, in about eight years, BART and high-speed rail will all be converging here at the Deridon Station. How is the community preparing for this? Well, it is a major task because we're going to have millions of riders a year coming into this station on over 700 trains a day of various kinds, light rail, uh, commuter rail, metro rail, and high-speed rail. And uh, that has to uh, be greeted, that influx of riders has to be greeted with a seamless feeder and distribution system to transport those people arriving out to Silicon Valley jobs. And uh, we have the capacity, uh, we have to rebuild this station and the area around it. There is a joint powers board studying that process now. And that reconstruction process uh, should begin in about two years. And so you say you have to rebuild the area around it. What's that gonna look like? Well, it probably is gonna completely change the look of the city of San Jose. Uh, we're instead of a, a small train station, it's actually quite big, yes, but it, it, will, is. it will look like it's a small station compared to what's going to be built. Uh, there's going to be a massive uh, station that has Caltrain, high speed rail, uh, the Capital trains, the Metro, uh, the Altamont Extra Express, the uh, uh, Amtrak trains, and, uh, and uh, all converging here. Uh, along with uh, light rail coming under the station. Light rail is already here. 
and then the BART uh, tunnel coming under the light rail station, under the station. Wow. And, and uh, all of that converging is, is going to uh, then require huge amounts of services. People are going to be driving here to take trains. They're going to be uh, uh, commuting in by bus and by bicycle and, and uh, walking in order to be able to uh, uh, exchange in their transportation capacities. And it's, it's going to require quite a different kind of interchange uh, planning. So uh, let's say it's eight years from now. I want to take a train to San Francisco. How long is it going to take me? Uh, 30 minutes. 30 minutes, wow. Cal Caltrain will take you there in 30 minutes because they're being electrified and they're going to be uh, doing 100 miles an hour with the electric trains. Uh, High-speed trains are going to be electric and they're going to take uh, 30 minutes, a little less than 30 minutes. They're going to be going 120 miles an hour. They won't go full speed on the peninsula because there's so much housing next to it. Right. Uh, and so it's going to be a very easy, uh, quick, and nice commute for the people along the tracks because you won't have the dirty, noisy diesels with all the vibrations of a heavy train. And there has been some opposition along that line, uh, particularly Menlo Park, some of those places. Are you feeling confident that you're gonna be able to resolve that? Well, it's been resolved by the courts. Uh, all of the court cases have been settled now in favor of the high-speed rail project. And so the, the project is going ahead. There is no more delaying uh, possibility along the peninsula. And the re resolution is that we're going to use the tracks that are already there. We're not going to build a whole new track system, an elevated system, and right, so on. Right. We're going to use the tracks that are already there, put an electric overhead system, it's called a catenary system, like you see in Europe, mm -hmm. and, and it would be used both by Caltrain and by the high-speed trains. Okay, so let's talk uh, quickly about um, high-speed rail. What, uh, bring us up to date, what's happening now? Um, well, the first question is, okay, people always ask me, why are they starting in the Central Valley? Well, the Central Valley was chosen because we have to be near the maintenance base. And the maintenance base is gonna be in the Fresno Bakersfield area. It has to be in the middle of the system. Secondly, we needed to stretch a track where we could test the trains at full speed, 220 miles an hour. Okay. It has to be flat, straight track, and that's the Central Valley. Also, you can build more track there than any place else, less expensively, because it's flat and straight. And finally, uh, if we built it in the north, the south would have gone crazy. If we built it in the south, the north would have gone crazy. We would have had a civil war on our hands. Right, so putting in the middle, both the north and south are now competing to be the next extension. Fortunately, the High Speed Rail Authority Board has chosen the north to be the next extension, so it's coming to San Jose next. Okay, let me just finish off quickly and ask you, of all the projects you've done in transportation in our region, what are you most proud of? Well, you know, I've, I've chaired nine different rail projects uh, during my time, and I think, um, I think the high-speed rail project is, is the one that I'm most proud of because it was the most difficult. I, I chaired that uh, uh, board for a lot of years, and I'm chair emeritus now, and, uh, and I'll have to tell you that it was very hard until Jerry Brown became the governor. And then it became much easier because Jerry is a doer. And he just took that in his hand and with his little iron fist, he has made it happen. And it's gonna happen now. There's, uh, 20, there's $20 billion now committed to the project. It's funded between Bakersfield and San Jose now. And that'll be done by 2024. Fabulous news. And thank you to Jerry Brown. And thank you all for watching California Up Now. Check us out on the web, www.newsupnow.com. You can also send us a question. Thank you.